Hello and welcome to the Rapid Power Podcast, where we ask power addicts some power platform and some non-power platform questions. Now, let's get started. Welcome to the episode number two of Rapid Power Podcast. Uh, we have Lisa and Megan joining us today. Thank you so much for joining. Um, both from different parts of the world. It was hard to get this time slot. It's most comfortable for me and a bit odd for both of them, but I appreciate uh, both of you joining. Thanks, Megan. Thanks, Lisa. You're welcome. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, uh, after our first episode, which was with John Levesque and Gita, I'm excited to have this one with uh, the uh, the rising stars, I would say, of the Up podcast. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'm I have followed that podcast uh, since it started, and I'm excited to have you on this podcast and uh, kind of have this discussion around Power Platform and not some Power Platform stuff. Awesome. It's awesome. a nice cro- nice crossover, isn't it? Podcast people with podcast person. And thank you I for always, following us. Yeah. <laughs> I, I always wondered one thing, though, that uh, do people, like, when they come on other podcasts, do they, like, is there, like, a payment that people, like, who are doing it for... Um, like their main job do they pay people to come on each other's podcast or uh, well I'm expecting a check from you so uh... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll sort that out that yeah, awkward so we should have discussed that before yeah, but yeah 50,000 is fine <laughs> we'll have to think about which currency though I'll yeah. take it in US dollars <laughs> frankly at this point in Australia that does well for me <laughs> All right. Uh, now that we are pumped up a bit, let's uh, let's get into get into our questions. The so the way this would work is I'll ask the first question, um, then Megan will ask hers, Lisa will ask hers. We will start with three power platform. We'll do three another not so power platform questions, and we'll have one surprise question in the end. Um, so let's start with my question first. Uh, if you were given the job to come up with a new power platform product, what would that be? And what would you call it? It can doesn't have to be something related to business. It can be something personal or something funny. Uh, so Megan, what do you think? Right. So I would create Power Responder. That would be the name of the product. And it would be really self-serving. And it would help anybody that does um, not just not just MVPs, not just people that do community content, but anybody that is trying to manage their um, responses that they get from people on online, on social media, that kind of thing. So I'd like something that can pull everything in that I need to respond to. So that's either submissions on my WordPress website where I get a comment and I'm like, I've got to go and respond to it or um, emails that come through from my contact form, Twitter, YouTube, anything where it's not work related, but I can feed it into my Power Responder app. And then I can go into it on a Sunday morning when I'm sitting drinking my coffee and I've got nothing else to do. And I can respond to all of those things from the app and then it will go off and it will push it out to the blog or push it back out to the person on YouTube or Twitter or whatever. So that's what I would create is the Power Responder which I think nice. it would be quite popular. I want, I want that. It sounds good, doesn't it? I've tried. Yeah, to, I've actually too. tried to create it yeah. with a power app, but uh-huh. the annoying API. Some of them where it doesn't like the YouTube one. I can't get comments. I can't get stuff from like in the way in which I would need it to. But in my head, the power app would be amazing. It just yeah, it's not possible. Yeah. One day maybe it is possible. Once the APIs open up quite a bit, we could probably do that. Oh, well, you're that API. You're that API guy here. We got a guy. <laughs> yeah, my, <laughs> sorted, right? Yeah, it's, I have. I'm having a lot of ideas right now. That yeah, because so you've got you've got the out. handle to sort this out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so I, I always start. I started down the path until I realised I can't do everything, and I thought, well, if I can't do everything, I don't want it. I want all, or I want nothing. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. So that's my product. How about you, Lisa? All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna play for laughs a little bit here. <laughs> this is um there is something serious underlying this, but uh, I I have had a request from someone um that that has inspired this idea, and I think we need power Tinder. 
So this case, oh, sure. <laughs> expressions on people's faces. I said I'm playing this for a laugh. So the story behind this is that um, is that I did actually seriously have someone who had been to our Day training and messaged me afterwards, telling me all the problems of why he couldn't create Tinder with the Power apps because people would have to download the Power apps app and whatever. So my joke here is Power Tinder. What I'm really after is. Um, something we could give to consumers, like a consumer kind of app thing. So this to me is, and I, I kind of get why it doesn't exist because it's it's a business applications platform and I spend my life explaining that. But the desire for people to use this technology to create consumer apps is there. And so I'm sure there would be a better name for it, but, uh, you know, as a way of grabbing attention, that's where I'm going. <laughs> Our nice. Tinder. All right. <laughs> is it going to match when you... Uh... People who love power addicts. <laughs> uh, no, might 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 stop some of the LinkedIn messaging there. <laughs> yes. uh, what's yours, Vivek? So uh, I'm going a bit outside the software uh, platform. I'm I want to have a hardware device, which so I'm I'm calling it the power keyboard, which will have all the different things that we need to do quickly on either power automate or power apps. Could be. Uh, a button press to do to add actions it could be to add controls in power apps and there'll be like icons for everything so i don't know how much of versioning up or how many updates it will require because we have updates from power platform every day but at least it will cover most of the stuff which i can do quickly rather than trying to move my mouse over all the time so it could be a power keyboard or it could be probably a power deck like in like mm-hmm. we have every yeah. The gato decks or like I was going to say, it sounds thing. like a stream deck. Yeah, yeah, something like that. <laughs> the so. button box. Please yeah. tell me it's got like some kind of beautiful rainbow lighting underneath on the keyboard as well. You know, it's, it's just some kind of um, some no, kind of purple, beautiful design purple element. Lighting. Purple. Oh, of course, yes. yes the yes. background here. <laughs> yeah, it has to be power ups purple. <laughs> nice. I would use both of those. I like it. Nice. Cool. All right. So I'm next with my first question. Um, all right, so what is the coolest thing you've ever created in relation to the Power Platform that you are most proud of? And it doesn't matter if it was never used by someone in the real world, so it doesn't have to have been like a, a real business use case, um, but what are you most proud of that you've created? So I, I'm i going to, with this one, um, nominate the very first Power App I ever built as the thing that I'm the most proud of. Cool in the sense that I achieved a thing that was very cool. Certainly not cool stacked up against, you know, other things that get created. But my first power up, so this is going back um, September 2017-ish. It's, it's a, you know, like really, really early days of this stuff before we had all of this community being so active, before we had, um, before we had you know, all of the instructions, before the user interface was as easy to use as it is now, frankly. Um, I had just started a job at Barhead where I still work. Uh, my boss, Ken Struthers, said we've got a customer here who needs this thing done. It was basically like a lead capture app. It sounds so basic now. And he said to me, I think this would be a power up. Like it was a retail scenario and they wanted to capture the, you know, people walking walking to the store. Do you reckon that's a power up? And I'm like brand new in this job. (laughs) And I sort of went, "Um, can you give me a couple of hours and I'll figure this out? I went away and I read what little there was around. I came back and went, yes, that's a power up. And he went, great. How long is it going to take you to build it? And so I built that thing from zero. That was the very first thing I did, piecing together things that I knew nothing about and formulas I knew nothing about. But I got the customer branding on it. It was, looking back on it, a solidly little th- good three screen up, but it took me two days to build the thing. But, gee, I was proud of that and I'm still proud of that. That's the very first thing I ever, ever built. Nice. Yes. Vivek. That was a pretty cool one. And I know it, it, you always have this memories with the first one because you are always trying to, it, it's a new thing, new tool, and you don't know everything and you're trying to figure out how do I best use it. So yeah. Um, so I'm going to, it's not my first app, but uh, this was, actually there was nothing Power Apps related to this, but this was during a road trip uh, with John, Anton, um, Ed, we we're going from Cincinnati to Orlando, and uh, th- so we build. So we we were listening to songs, and we were like, okay, we are we have a long road trip, and we are flow fam. So we need to do something related to Power Automate. 
So you build a flow where um, it will catch tweets from people with a hashtag so that they could submit songs, song recommendations. And we built a, a connector to Spotify and we had an approval. So John looked at his phone, approved it. And as soon as he hit approve, it started playing it on our car, in our car. That is that awesome. Audio. I yeah, remember when you guys did this because I saw it on Twitter and I thought it was the coolest thing ever. So I think, fun. Yeah, I think nothing can be more cooler than that and something which we did do like while driving the car. By the end of it, I had a headache and I was like, okay, I'm done now. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. That's awesome. Very cool. So so mine is also related to a power app and it was the first one that I'd built. Um, but it also was combined with I had been working for an organization and they wanted to start um, getting net promoters. They basically wanted to implement net promoter score within the organization. And we were using dynamics and we were using voice of the customer. So you had the net promoter score was one of the questions. Um, and I did say voice of the customer, didn't I? Yes. yes. Okay. I just in my head I was like, did I say the right thing? So anyway, so I basically created an entire process that would capture that net promoter score, um, update on the on the customer um what their most recent score was, and then it would go to the account level and basically say what's the overall net promoter score for an account based on all of the contacts, and also what's the net promoter score at the top level or at, at the business unit. And then I took it and thought, OK, I want to do something different. And I saw Rory Neary, and I've mentioned this before a couple of times on our podcast, um, and I saw Rory Neary do a presentation, um, and Rory is um, awesome at Power Apps. And he did a presentation that I just was like in awe of. It was absolutely amazing. And I thought, I could create something from Net Promoter Score. So I created this app that basically allowed somebody to delve into the promoters, the detractors, the passives, um, and had a whole um, epiphany of how I could do these things and then make it better over time. So again, it's that first like first idea of like, oh my God, what could I, I could build this as a power app and then actually doing it and then making it better and improving on it. So yeah, cool. It was, it was actually used by the organization. Um, but yeah, it was the coolest thing I think at that time that I did. And that was a couple of years ago. So sadly mine was actually never used. It was the best demo ever and the best learning path ever, but it was never used. <laughs> Learning experience is good. That's part of oh, it. Oh, yes, for sure. Oh, yes. Well, it seems to set me on a path to something that's worked out. So, you know. Yeah. All right. So my question. Yes. So my question is, what is an underrated new feature from the PAL platform this year that you are excited about? Something that's awesome, but that hasn't had that much attention. So, yeah, um, I, I thought about this and um, it's a small feature that kind of came in and went and it's not there anymore. It wasn't announced or anything, um, but I'm hoping that it comes back. <laughs> Data flat? <laughs> Sorry, no, nothing. You're not Sorry. going there already. <laughs> Sorry. I said no, no, I, I'm not going to create a controversy on this podcast. <laughs> uh, but so it, it's a simple thing. It's not a big feature, but it was inputs and outputs on your actions in flows. So when you ran through a flow, it showed what it sent, like how it shows in Power Apps Monitor. Uh, it shows what exactly the query was sent and what output was received and the whole kind of API call, kind of the whole, uh, I would say, the request that it made. Is that where it showed down the side, on the right-hand side? Yeah. yeah, and it's going I thought now. I saw it and it was, so why on earth would they remove it? Because I was like, I'm sure it used to show up for like a split second and then why did they take that away? So yeah, that, so I think that came within the action, but then they started showing things on the mm -hmm. right. Um, yeah. Hope that that comes back. Um, oh, I hope so too. Yeah. yeah, I did notice that the other day. I was like, "Where's that thing gone?" And then I thought, "Well, maybe it was only certain actions. Maybe I was just remembering wrong. It was a dream." Yeah. But I, I mean, uh, it, it was uh, definitely something which was really helpful. And I know oh. these are small features, but they make uh, a lot of difference when you're trying oh, to those troubleshoot. Little things, so, yeah, yeah, the things that make the troubleshooting easier. Yeah. yeah. Is is a big deal. Yeah. yeah. So, so my, uh, I'm next, right? So mine is um, something that I'm hoping they will expand on um, that I noticed where in the customer service app, there's now one where you can get like the multi-session app. 
Have either of you looked at that? Oh, that was in the wave two. I haven't looked at it, but I read. Yeah. yeah. So, so basically what that does, if you think about a model-driven app and let's say that you are looking at a list of cases and then you open up a case, everything's within like that main sort of area, that main real estate um, where the form opens and everything. So the multi-session app, basically I could open up a case and then I could open up another one and it would add a new tab into that main area. So mm. I would have sessions within where you would usually end up with your list, your views, um, with your list of records or your form. Oh, so, so I didn't get that when I was reading. It's not like another browser tab. It's actually within the same. You no, know, it's within the model driven app. So uh, I tried, I was like, oh, this will be really cool. I'll, yeah. I'll add it into an app. You cannot add it into a model driven app at the moment mm. I couldn't find or, or I couldn't figure out a way to do it and I actually took a copy and tried to then recreate it from there wouldn't work so I'm hoping that they expand and allow that to be a control that you can then use to say right how do I want records to open either within the same or within a new tab to create multiple sessions so yeah I think that it could it's underrated if it if it gets rolled out elsewhere, then I think that could be pretty big. So that's one I read about in the um when we went through all the wave two stuff. I remember that one there, and I remember writing it down and thinking this sounds like it's a big deal, but I don't kind of get it. So it might be underrated. Just you know, I'm sure I'm not the only one who did that. So like, well, can I just open new tabs in my browser or whatever? But having you looked at the experience now, if you think it's awesome, I'm gonna I'm totally go to check it out after well, we finish recording. Customer, you know, <laughs> if you're a customer service rep and you're dealing, mm. if you think about a call center or something with a really high volume to have to flip back and forwards all the time yes mm. i could have multiple browsers open but then you end up with a little bit of performance degradation yeah. at some point don't you so to have it yeah. within the same app yeah so it's pretty uh, cool. well, i'm glad you think that's awesome as i said I, I had pegged that as a as a kind of i think this is a big deal but i'm not quite getting it so there you go it could, it could thank be. you thanks for the tip you're welcome <laughs> uh so me for my own question here um I'm going to go into something a little bit, again, a little bit obscure, but within within Dynamics 365 sales, there's a sales insights um, piece that does that, that adds AI to sales. And within that, and this has existed for a while, is the ability to do predictive scoring. So predictive opportunity scoring, how likely is this opportunity to close? And the, the new feature that's underrated here is that they've completely upgraded the widget on that thing. So there's like a little widget that sits on the screen. And the way that it used to display like you'd get a nice view that would show here are all of the um here's the the scores for my predictive scores for my opportunity but when you went into the opportunity itself the widget on the screen was, eh, it was a little bit messy it was showing schema names and showing you know system it just wasn't awesome they've really upgraded that so that it's a beautiful looking little widget now that makes it really clear what the up and down grade rankings are. You can open it and get like a history of the score in a pane down the side. And you can actually grab that widget now. It's got form designer support. So I could create my own form and grab that widget and put it on there. So yeah, right. little thing, but really makes that feature sing and um, and makes a huge difference. And every time I look at it, I'm thinking, oh, that's so much an improvement on, <laughs> on, on a functionality it, that existed but wasn't showing itself as lovely as it, um, as it is now. So. Yeah, do a blog about it so we can see. Yeah. In my spare time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so that was some good discussion around Power Platform. Let's uh, let's forget about Power Platform for a few minutes now and let's jump on to some uh, uh, general questions. So the first one from me would be, so the last uh, episode we, we talked about if after the pandemic ends, um, when we don't know but whenever it does um i asked where would you travel to and this time i want to ask what would be the first thing that you do which doesn't involve travel so megan what are you so th there would be a little bit of travel but with but in a car like within the same country so i'm hoping that <laughs> that's, that's allowed, allowed. <laughs> um so one thing that i absolutely love to do is go for afternoon tea. So anyone that's that's maybe American or Australian, I don't know if you have the concept of afternoon tea, but it's a very quintessential British thing to do. And afternoon tea is, it's not like just tea and scones, but it's like little sandwiches that are cut into like, like fingers or triangles. And then you've got the little tiny cakes and then you have scones as well. But to me, they're just like a bit pointless when you've got cake, like I'd rather have cake than scones. Anyway, um, one of the things that I 
love to do is go for afternoon tea with my dad and um, and my stepmom. And we actually had a festive afternoon tea booked to where there was a window between um, lockdown that was a glo- like a national lockdown and then it being allowed to be in different tiers and unfortunately where we were going to go was put into the highest tier so it oh. was cancelled so that is what I would do I can't wait to go and spend time with them with and have afternoon tea so that's what I'll do that's cool yeah, that yeah. sounds awesome yeah we do have the concept here as well. I'm with you on. I'm with you on love that. Love it. Oh my god. <laughs> it gets called so it gets called high tea here, which is probably high, like, no. High tea is high tea is not the full uh, gamut of savory right. and sweet. High tea is, I think, just the tea and coffee and. Uh, well, so we on. we may be using the word incorrectly, but if we were if I was saying that, we'd say we'd go for high tea somewhere is how right. we commonly call it. But the concept of what you've described is that's what I would call that. Afternoon tea is what my kids ask for when they get home from school. Yeah. So, right. <laughs> which does not generally involve cucumber sandwiches and a tea <laughs> tray. I'm a terrible mother. Yeah. <laughs> so that, just one cl- clarification: what time is this afternoon tea? It could be it could be uh, whatever time like I might have it at, like one o'clock because to me it's oh, okay. like it's like it's a like lunch a <laughs> but, but I always try and find fancy ones like I went to one that was Alice in Wonderland themed and one that was Charlie and the Chocolate Factory one where that was chocolate themed so I try and find a themed afternoon tea it's even uh-huh. better nice anyway sorry carry on Lisa <laughs> what about you <laughs> I feel like I need to go and eat chocolate now <laughs> so for me the first thing I want to do and I I've, I've realized the thing one of the things I'm missing the most is being around noise I'm a, an extrovert I love being around noise and people and live theatre and in particular musicals. So um, Megan and I have talked a lot about Hamilton the musical on the podcast. I I would love to go see a live musical and I'd pick Hamilton if it was on, but frankly anything because for me that thing of getting, you know, seats right down near the front and the experience of seeing a musical on stage and just the way that the the rhythm of that, the music just kind of goes bang right into your chest. Like it really, it you feel it physically when you're in that room with all of those people and with the crowd. I saw um, even not even necessarily musical, I saw the Harry Potter stage show. I saw one called Come From Away was the last one I saw before everything shut down. And there's just a really uplifting feeling I get from that that's that's just like swells inside my rib cage from seeing something like that. So that would be the first thing I would do, big crowded room and allow something with a, a musical where the music just goes boom and you come away going, yeah. <laughs> so um, maybe it'll be yeah. Hamilton. I don't know what's going to come Good back choice. here. But um, so a mu- whatever musical is first available and open in Melbourne, I'm there. <laughs> That's cool. I, I know that that's not something that you can experience at home any in any format. So yeah. Yeah. No. I try so, to I try to replicate it by singing along really loud, but it isn't the same. <laughs> it's not. It's not. So for me, it's gonna be one thing which I know a lot of people are gonna do, but um, it's gonna be restaurants. Just going to restaurants because that experience of go takeouts is not that fun. <laughs> Just going to the restaurant, uh, not worrying about kind of opening it up in your home and eating and look, doing the vessels or something after that. Just going to the restaurant, having that experience. Noise is another part of it, having that commotion around you. And um, I would say if I know that this is the day when I, after which I can kind of go out, I basically book appointments for the next week or something at least every day just to go somewhere uh, and try something. So, yeah that would be the first thing that I would do. Yeah. I think just experiences in general is just the thing that you mm-hmm. miss, isn't it? It's just kind of outside your own home. So yeah. Yeah. Um, So my question, if money wasn't an object, meaning it doesn't matter how much you have to make, in other words, you don't have to worry about paying your rent or like cost of education or anything, what job would you love to do, assuming the power platform didn't exist? So um, mine is something that could happen with the Power Platform but isn't even specific to that. My dream job would be to be the the keynote speaker on demand, basically. You know, I love more than anything public speaking a crowd. There's a bit of a theme emerging here in my things, isn't there? But, um, <clears throat> but that idea of being, I don't know, like the invited 
keynote speaker to to big conferences and things and to talk on something with some degree of wisdom and helpfulness and and <laughs> and have a you know that would be that would my be my dream job i mean the ultimate dream there is like a ted talk kind of scenario so you know if i didn't have to worry about paying the rent and i could um <clears throat> and i could just you know develop whatever content that is and figure out how to do that but that would be my that would be my absolute absolute dream job so so in the meantime i i replicate that in small ways to <laughs> Nice. to do something similar that actually pays the bills <laughs> <laughs> nice uh so for me it's gonna be so i i love kind of uh, geeking out uh, over like tech products and it could be anything it could be um i mean any tech product could be like a new device that come up has come up, smart home device or it could be a laptop or anything so my dream job would be to make tech reviews um and just do that and not worry about even like creating videos and stuff out of it. I just want to do the tech review. I want to uh, see how the gadget works and everything. I don't want to care about putting it on YouTube or anything. <laughs> if money wasn't the thing, right? I just want to so do just tech review reviews. it for yourself. Yeah, just have fun of it. Just understand just it for have yourself. Have fun out of it, right? I just yeah. still review. I don't want to care about having views and stuff on my channel. Just yeah. review, and I can maybe give a review back to the the company, but that's it. See, I like this. I want to be famous, and you just want to do something for yourself. <laughs> No, but you're right. If, I mean, that's why I, I asked if money wasn't an object and you don't have to worry about paying bills. So so for me, um, have either of you seen a program? It's on Netflix. It's called Somebody Feed Phil. No. OK, so there's this program that I watched not that long ago, and it's a guy. Um, I think he wrote a program called Everybody Loves Raymond, which is a U.S. Yes, thing. Yes, I know that one. Um, yeah. yeah. So, um, so anyway, I don't know how we got this got this program, but he <laughs> travels to all of these places all around the world and basically gets like in, taken into people's homes. He like gets somebody that's going to be his tour guide that takes him to all of the like the local eatery places where they're like, okay, this is like not something you would ever order, but then he is he tries it and he's like, oh my god, I would never have ordered that, and it's the best thing that, I, that I've ever had. So he basically got to gets to go around and eat food and be taken around by locals and experience the country in a way that you never would. And I absolutely love food uh, and it just sounds amazing. You get to travel at the same time. So I don't necessarily want to do the Netflix program. And like you, Vivek, I'd, I'd, I'd just quite, quite happily just travel around and just eat. It doesn't have to be that I'm reviewing the food or reviewing the place. I just want to go to lots of places and eat lots of food. <laughs> Is that wrong? <laughs> no. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. So that that would be awesome. And if somebody paid me for it a little bit, then that would be great as well. So. Nice. That sounds awesome. <laughs> All right, so our final question here is, um, if you could give your 18-year-old self one piece of advice, what would it be? So... In our last podcast episode, we had the same question, but it was 20-year-old self. <laughs> oh, really? <So laughs> we'll go back two gonna, years from whatever you said Yeah, then. <laughs> so I guess I'll have to think. Of, I thought about, okay, two years before, what would I have said myself? So my 20-year-old self, I said that just be confident in whatever you do. 18-year-old, um, maybe I'll say that, and that this is like a very specific thing. So this was around like, my first or second year of college and I was trying to shift my um, like my I was in electrical electronics engineering and I wanted to move to electronics and communication for some reason. Um, so it's very specific. I'm going to say that I you shouldn't have tried doing that. Just be wherever you are because it's not going to matter towards the end of your degree because you'll end up doing something else after that. So I guess more it it's about like focus on what you have and not kind of worry about getting into something which probably will be better. Just do whatever you are doing and uh, tomorrow anyways, you'll be somewhere else. So don't think too much into it right now. Very true. Very true. So, um, so 18, that's not really that many years ago. So it's quite easy. <laughs> it's <just> yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so God, no, it is quite a while. Um, so for me, I think I would tell myself um, not to worry about friendships. And by that, I mean, um, I think as you get older, you realize that 
there are people that can be in your life for, let's call it a season. They can be in your life for a season, however long that is. And it can be amazing and you can be, you can think that that's going to be the person that you will be friends with for the rest of your life and you're inseparable and whether you work with them, whether you're at school with them, university, whatever. And and then it, it changes and then you sometimes feel the sadness and you'd be like, oh my God, but why? Why is that friendship ended? So I think knowing that you can have friendships, amazing friendships that are there and they're there whether you believe in things happen for a reason or, you know, whatever. They can be there for a purpose and you can have an amazing friendship and it's okay for that friendship to move on. It's not a disaster. It's not that you've done anything wrong. It's just that they're not going to be in your life forever and it's not necessarily a bad thing. So I think that's what I would tell my 18 year old self. Don't get hung up on thinking you have to keep friendships going when sometimes just let it fade away and keep the keep the fond memories of that person that you have. I love that idea of, of seasons. Yeah, I that's was a gonna, really gonna nice way of putting thing. it because that's a concept that you know I've experienced too. We all have, but that idea of thinking about it is that that some friendships are last a season, whatever that is. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And just don't get hung up on it. Yeah. So yeah, don't wait for a season so, two of it, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> One season only. So mine's in a similar similar vein to um, to Vivek, which is, um, but you know, not so much on what type of engineering. But I sweated so much at that age on career choice, and um, I had, you know, I think when you're that age, and I'm, I'm surprised even seeing my kids now that, and my nieces and nephews and so on, people still ask young people at that age, what are you going to do? What do you want to be when you grow up? And I just think it's such an invalid question, having been on a journey of having done three completely different things now, and I'm not retired yet, you know? So I, I was, I was someone who was, um, equally good at and equally interested in languages and books and maths and computing. And, and what do you do with that? Because those two things don't go together, except that what do I do with that? Well, the thing I'm doing now is something that certainly combines those things, but it didn't exist when I was 18. Um, and so I, I always felt like I had to make a choice between these things. And, you know, everyone, I, I ended up sort of, you know, doing a degree and I, I was all over the place for a long time about making this choice of what do I want to be when I grow up when in fact I've done yeah I've done three completely different three completely different careers and I actually feel very privileged for having been able to make changes and that being good at different things has allowed me to do different things and that that's an option I hadn't actually really thought was an option that I could get to a mid-career and do something completely different so um yeah I I, I really try to de-emphasize the what do you want to be when you grow up conversation because you know it'll change <laughs> and I would tell my 18 year old self just don't worry about it very similar to what you said Vivek go with go with what you're doing now because it'll change anyway yeah yep. uh, yeah i think that's one thing which everyone is i mean everyone's worried about it everyone knows that it's going to change uh and you only realize it when you are uh, like yeah i don't think later. you can have that perspective even if i told my 18 year old yeah. self that she would still probably sweat on it but mm. you know i think you don't yeah. i think you don't have that perspective at that yeah. age um but yeah well that's if, the problem uh, all this advice is just wasted because anyone that's 18 <laughs> and listen will be like whatever <laughs> <laughs> All right. So as I said, uh, there will be one surprise question which you guys didn't prepare for, but it's not going to be that tough. Um, so what was the last, I would say, what would you qualify as a, like a fully, like a full course meal or something like that? What was the last meal that you made and what was it? Uh, should I so go? Megan, that was like yeah. oh, only a couple of hours ago that I can remember. Um, I mean, it was only like one course and then some chocolates uh but um i made um uh also also is that how you say it pasta also also is that how you say it i don't know You're anyway i don't know what's helping you here <laughs> um a, a pasta with um shrimp and uh tomato tomato <laughs> um and parm parmesan or parmesan and um some salad and then two chocolates because I can't have a meal without finishing with something sweet. Nice. Sounds almost like you prepared a meal with accents. So that was good. <laughs> well, you know, we've got, I'm sure, uh, a diverse listening yes. audience uh, yeah, from yeah. different lands. <laughs> 
What about you, Lisa? Well, the last meal I cooked was actually uh, um, a, a cooked breakfast because one of the things I've been doing in lockdown is cooking myself breakfast, which I never, you know, I was always kind of a grab the muesli and, and run, you know, type of type of situation, pack it the night before and go to the gym or whatever. So for me, this has been a bit of a go-to. And then the last thing I cooked is a, a poached egg with avocado on toast. It's a very basic meal, but it's, it's something choice. that it's it's very 2020. I have to say, I would only ever get that in a cafe and where we're not allowed to go out to restaurants and things. And I've actually got a whole routine going now with I've got my coffee machine, um, and I know it's like you know you get the the toast goes here, the water goes on there. I've got the timing, just like an absolute rhythm of cooking this lovely little kind of uh, poached egg on poached egg on toast with avocado on the toast. It's got a is is the thing. So yeah, there you go. Cool. That's the last thing I cooked. Nice. <laughs> nice. So I, um, the, the last thing that I could, which I kind of qual qualify as a full course meal or something like that, because generally we end up cooking something or bring, getting something from outside, uh, but that's very small. But um, this was during Diwali, which is in the, like, the Indian festival. We had a full course meal. We, we had a few friends, but um, it was, I mean, it's called Dam Alu, but it's basically slowly cooked potatoes and kind of onion based gravy onion and tomatoes uh, but yeah it's uh, it it requires almost like an hour to make or even more than that sometimes so yeah that was the last thing that i uh, i would say made which was a full course meal <laughs> nice yeah full course to me would be three at least three courses like yeah which I have yeah, not so done for a any long elaborate thing, yeah. I, yeah. Probably I was going for an elaborate meal, but uh, it's okay. I, I just well, if you want an elaborate, an elaborate meal, I've actually done the most recent one. I did. I've done some cooking classes in lockdown. We've got a place that sends a box with a with a chef online and the recipe and stuff. Um, there was <laughs> there was. Prawn. It was a Middle Eastern kind of spicy Turkish thing with prawns on an eggplant um, platter. I, I don't even have the words for it because it was amazing. So I, I do what would do more than a poached egg every now and again as well. Nice. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you, uh, both of you. Um, if, if people want to follow you, uh, where can they, how can they look up for your blog or podcast? Well, the podcast, obviously, you can find us both at theuppodcast.com or on Twitter at the underscore up underscore podcast. Um, for me, um, if you go to Megan V, the V is very important, go to meganvwalker.com. Um, and then I've got like a ton of blog, blog posts on there. And then I've got my social media profile links. So Twitter, I've got a YouTube channel and then LinkedIn as well. That's me. And for me, obviously, the, the Up podcast links we, we share that Megan mentioned, you'll find me on Twitter, um, Lisa M. Crosby, because somebody else had, you know, Lisa Crosby. Everywhere else on the socials, um, you'll find me on LinkedIn. I'm pretty easy to find by my name. Just spell it Crosby with an IE on the end. And if you if you find me, I've got lisacrosby.com and you'll find me on LinkedIn um, as well. All right. Thank you. And uh, uh, so for those of you who have been subscribed to the podcast yet, uh, go to anchor.fm slash rapid power that's where you can subscribe all the show notes will be available there and also i'll put all the links to lisa's and megan's um kind of blogs and podcasts in show notes as well so thank you for listening to us and we'll talk to you next time <laughs>